Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to my channel and welcome back to Gotcha SEO if you're watching this on my website. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how to practically steal your competitor's links using Ahrefs. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you step-by-step step how to first A, identify these link opportunities that your competitors are basically just handing to you. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna show you how to go through the process of acquiring these links that your competitors already have. And so I'm gonna show you first how to find them, then I'm gonna show you how to find contact information, and I'm actually gonna give you a few templates that you can use in your outreach to acquire these backlinks that your competitors have. And so this is a very exciting video and it's gonna be a very in-depth video. So please strap in, get ready to go, and get prepared to learn. So let's jump right in. All right, guys, so I am inside of Ahrefs, and now what I'm going to show you is how to analyze your competitors and then take link opportunities out of their link profile. So what you need to do is just go to the Site Explorer section, and once you're there, put a competitor URL into the search bar. So for this example, I'm going to use greatest.com. And once the analysis is complete, go to the backlink profile section and click on backlinks. So of course, anyone can fire up Ahrefs, put a competitor URL in here and find all kinds of link opportunities. And that does not require a ton of skill. All that you really need is just access to this tool. So how is it that some people have all of the same information, all of the same data, but some people are able to acquire more backlinks. Well, the reason is because the people that acquire the most backlinks in a niche are the people that have a process. And so that's what I'm gonna show you in this video. It's super easy to find link opportunities. You can literally put any of your competitors' URLs in here, and you can just extract every single link that they've ever gotten, or at least that Ahrefs has found, and these are all link opportunities that you can try to acquire as well. So the objective of this video is for me to show you a link acquisition strategy that you can use to actually get backlinks that your competitors have. And so really all that it takes is for you to first identify the type of link that your competitor has. And then once you've done that, then you just need to use the appropriate strategy for that particular link type. So the first thing you need to understand is going to be the link type. And so obviously, you only want to target do follow backlink opportunities. But outside of just do follow and no follow, there are specific link types that are going to be easier or harder to acquire. Some low hanging fruits or backlinks that are easier to acquire are going to be guest posts, are going to be contributor accounts, and are going to be broken backlinks. And those three opportunities are usually the easiest to acquire because first of all, if you have a little bit of authority in your industry and you have some good ideas, you can get guest posts published that your competitors have already gotten published. So that's a pretty easy one. And then broken backlinks or any type of situation where you have some type of leverage is a good way to acquire backlinks as well. Now, a harder strategy is to find a backlink that your competitor has acquired or even gotten naturally and try to get that link replaced. And that's one strategy that people try to use. They try to actually switch out their competitor's backlinks and replace it with their backlink. And this does work from time to time, but you actually can have the best of both worlds. You can actually get your link placed in the same piece of content that your competitor has if you have something of equal or more value. And then out of all these strategies, the last method that you can use, which is the most frowned upon method, but believe it or not, is one of the most common, is simply pay to play. You identify a link opportunity and then you simply pitch them how much you're willing to pay to get listed or get a link on their site. And of course, this is against Google's guidelines, but this is what happens behind the scenes with a lot of these websites. You can pitch them how much you're willing to pay, but a better strategy is actually just to ask them how much they want for a link placement. But before you do that, and if you want to go that route and you want to actually buy link placements on websites, first of all, remember that it's risky. It is against Google's guidelines. So if you do buy a link placement, that does come with risk. 
Second of all, there's going to be some websites that do not accept payment for links. And so that's why you have to inquire about it first before you even start talking about any type of financials at all. So no matter what link type you're going after, you have to do this next step. And the next step is to find the contact information for the link prospect. And so there are many ways you can go about finding contact information. The first is to use Viola Norbert. The second is to use Email Hunter. So using Viola Norbert to find contact information is very straightforward. All you need to do is first create an account. And then what you need to do is just enter the first and the last name of the link prospect and then put their domain name and then hit the go ahead Norbert button. And this tool is very, very good at finding contact information. You may need to change up these details a little bit and maybe try to find other authors, but you will eventually be able to find the contact information that you're looking for using this tool. Now, if you for some reason are not able to find the contact information, then you should use the second tool, which is Email Hunter. So just go to hunter.io and then go ahead and just put the domain name of the link prospect. And then this tool is just going to show you all of the emails that are associated with that domain. So after you have found the contact information for all of these link prospects, what you have to do next is actually begin the process of outreach. So I always recommend that you try to build a relationship with the link prospects because that makes everything a lot easier when you actually ask them for a link instead of hitting them with cold offers. That does not mean that you have to do the extreme and become their best friend or have to take them out to dinner, but you do need to engage them at some level. And so that may be retweeting some of their content. That may be engaging with them on Twitter. That may be sending them an email just complimenting their content. That may be leaving a blog comment or many blog comments on their actual website. You just want your face to be visible on multiple platforms so that they know you actually exist and they see that you're someone that's adding value because I can tell you from experience, when I get cold outreach or any type of cold email to me, I don't usually even respond because I have no prior relationship with that person. So therefore, there really is no incentive for me to engage with them because they haven't even taken the time to engage with me. You should really take the time to engage with your link prospects and most importantly, engage with the blogs that are in your industry and the blogs that have influence in your industry. So it's not something you should be taking lightly because these are the people that are going to help you grow your business. So after you've gone through the process of engaging with your target link prospects, what you want to do is you want to begin to test the waters. So this is totally going to depend on the type of link that you're trying to acquire. So let's say you want to acquire a backlink using broken backlinks as leverage. So what you could do is you could just send a very simple template. You would just say, hey, name. So you insert your prospect's name. Love your blog. I blog over at your blog. So you can put whatever your blog name is. I was reading one of your articles and noticed that you had a few broken links. Would you like me to send the URL over? And so as you can see from this template, you're not asking for anything. You're just complimenting the prospect and you're adding value to them because you actually have something that can help them out. And then thirdly, you're not pitching anything. You're just seeing if they're actually interested. And that way, you're only going to be focusing on the people that are actually engaged and interested with you instead of just bombarding them with pitches. Because let's just say that you do send this template over to a prospect or an influencer in your industry and they don't respond. Well, you didn't burn bridges with them. They just didn't respond to your question. That's not a big deal at all. Because then in the future, you could reach out to them again without any weird history between the two of you. That's why it's always a bad idea to cold outreach to people in your industry because it really will burn bridges and it will leave a sour taste in some prospect's mouth if you don't take those initial steps to engage with them and try to build a relationship with them. So now let's say you want to acquire a backlink through a guest post. Here's a template that you can use. You can say, hey, name, so insert your prospect's name, love your blog. I blog over at insert your blog. I was wondering if you were accepting guest contributions at the moment. I have three ideas that I think would be perfect for your blog. Please let me know. Thanks. 
That's literally all there is to it. You just simply have to ask them if they're accepting guest contributions and wait for them to respond. It is really that simple. And one thing you have to keep in mind is a lot of people overcomplicate this whole process of link acquisition. But a lot of the time, if you simply just ask questions, a lot of the prospects will respond. And then you'll have more ammunition to actually come back with your pitch and come back with a strong offer to get a link. But if 99.9% of people ignore your emails, you're never going to get that opportunity. So when you do go through that process of building relationship and then just giving them the respect to actually ask a question before pitching them, you are going to have a much higher success rate. And so now I just want to show you one last template. And this is a template you would want to use if you were looking to replace a competitor's link with yours or just complement a competitor's link with a page that you have created. And so it's really important that if you're going to use a strategy that you have a page that is either better or better and different, or number three, takes an entirely different angle or has a completely different argument compared to your competitor. So here's a template that you could use in this situation. So you would say, hey, name, love your blog. I blog over at, insert your blog. I noticed that you are linking to, and then in this section, you would put your competitor's article about the topic. I created a similar piece of content, except it takes an entirely different angle. In fact, it, and then I put a couple different options you can use here. So you could say it argues that, it proves that, it disproves that. And then obviously insert why it's different. Would you be interested in reading it? Just let me know if you're interested and I'll send it over. Thanks. So this is a very effective template to use because you're creating intrigue and you're actually trying to add value to that prospect by giving them something that you believe is taking a different angle or is presenting something new to the industry. So that is going to be much more effective than just trying to ask for a backlink in an article without adding any value whatsoever. So then after you send out your outreach emails, all you have to do is just give it a little bit of time. I'd give it at least one to two weeks. And then many of these people will respond. Then you can obviously send your offer. And then for the people that don't respond, you can, of course, follow up with them just to see if they got your email. So it'd be something as simple as just saying, hey, name, I was just checking on this to see if you received my email. Literally that simple. You're not being annoying. You're just seeing if they received your email. And that's literally it. So the really what you need to get in your mind when you're doing the outreach is that you're not doing it just to get something for yourself. You're trying to treat the prospect with respect. You're trying to not be annoying because it's really important that you maintain good relationships with the influencers in your industry. And if you're working for a client, it's really important for you to maintain those same standards because you would never want to burn bridges with influencers in your client's industry because that would hurt your client's brand. And so you really need to be careful with that. So then after you've sent your offers, you've sent your follow-up emails, then you're just going to have to go through the process of either creating a guest post or outsourcing the creation of a guest post. And if you are paying for a placement, then you're simply going to have to send money to the link prospect. So it is really that simple. So like I said, anyone can find link opportunities, but the real magic happens when you begin the process of outreach and you begin that process of building relationships. And that is where you should be optimizing. There are unlimited link opportunities, but the one area where you should be constantly trying to refine, improve, and build systems for is your outreach process, because that is really where all the magic is going to happen if you were doing white hat SEO. So that is all you need to know for stealing your competitor's links using Ahrefs. Just use this tool to your advantage. Make sure you analyze your competitors so that you can extract link opportunities away from them and then go through that process of acquiring these backlinks that your competitors have because you know that these backlinks are working for them because of their organic search traffic results. And so that is all you need to know. So if you got a lot of value from this video and you like SEO training videos and you like getting better at SEO and you like growing your business, which I'm pretty sure you do, please give this video a big thumbs up and please subscribe to my channel. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video.